the truck is cursed. I'm convinced. It's fucking cursed. In this video, I'm going to give you guys an update on where we're at with the death shake. I've tried a couple of things to try to get it resolved. And I think we're a little bit closer to try to figure out the cost. So stay tuned. Got a lot to cover on this video. There we go, guys. We just disabled it. Now you disabled. If I don't at least try a tad, I won't be able to sleep. Oh, yeah, we figured it out. Nope, yeah. it's still there. Ah, fucking A. Ah, I'm gonna try it again. I thought we had it. It was working so good last night, and now it's not. Hey guys, hello, we keep it dirty off-road, and welcome to Death Shake 4, the search for the cause. Um, if you've been watching the video series, Death Shake 1, we went over the actual shake, we showed you guys what that looks like. Shit. In Death Shake 2, we were basically waiting for the dealer to do something, and, well, not dealer, but Ford to do their part, and we were just waiting. In Death Shake 3, we thought we had it all figured out, right? The steering was replaced end to end. We thought it was done, we went on a run. 90% of that run, the truck worked just fine. Last 20 miles, Death Shake comes back with a vengeance. That was awesome! Ah, no Death Shake! Passing the F-150 on the highway. Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna die twice. Eh? No, it's okay. Okay. It's a fucking November thing, dude. Are you still on stock lockdown? Are you judging me? Ah. Fucking egg. Are you waiting? The death shake is back. That's my thumb. So needless to say, I'm very frustrated. And at the end of that last video, we showed you guys that we we're doing an experiment, right? We're going to have the dealer zero out the steering to see if maybe a recalibration process could be the cause or something like that and also check the alignment and see what moved right and it turns out it was just the toe just the steering is the only thing having problem so since our last experiment we scouted some trails for an upcoming run we're doing a run to the colorado river it's a run i've been trying to do for a long time there's some world war ii history involved in this run and and it's a lot of fun because of what you get to see in this run and for the most part, the truck was behaving normally. And I thought that, okay, maybe again, maybe it is a circumcision of the steering rack that's causing this issue. But on a very mild section, Fuck, there it is. I would say very mild, so much so that I didn't even have my GoPro set up so I can record it. The shake came back and it was in different situations, right? We weren't going as fast. I think I was maybe doing like 50 or something like that hit the brakes, the trail wasn't even that rough, and it happened again. So that kind of confirmed to me that maybe it's not the hardware that's causing this problem, and I'm starting to think more it's software. So why am I thinking it's more software? Well, this only happens under heavy braking. The trail has to be rough for it to happen. So that tells me that there's a system involved that's being affected by the ABS. I think the ABS is causing another system to malfunction and it's causing all that feedback to come back onto the steering wheel for some reason. You know, it shouldn't be doing that. There's a few of you guys that brought up, start taking a look at the systems that are involved in the steering. If you look at Forescan, it's PCMS module, PC something. I'll put it out here. I, I keep forgetting what the name of it is. There's three features that people called out that I should be looking at and disabling and testing to see if it eliminated the issue. So in this video, guys, we're going to basically put the truck through its paces. We're going to take it and replicate the issue on three different types of trails. We're gonna first do a nice smooth trail. Second, we're gonna do a mild trail, meaning, you know, it's a nice flat road, but it may have a little bit of chop on it, but it's nothing for the Raptor. And then finally, washboards. And the whole goal is to duplicate the issue and see if these turning off these systems will reduce or eliminate the death shake. Now, before we get into that, that I've been getting a lot of feedback from you in the comments and all that stuff and you guys are like dude you go out and beat the truck every weekend and then you bitch when it breaks well there's a difference between it breaking because of something i did off-road and it failing because of a poor design uh, and let, let me kind of give you an example my 17 wasn't perfect it had some issues too but the main issues that it had were my fault the only defect my 17 had was an oil feed line that had to be replaced. Everything else that happened to that truck, from the IWE system, the check valves, 
to the hubs going out, to all that stuff. That was all related to off-roading. All that extra abuse took its toll on the truck and at about, you know, once this truck started hitting about 40,000 miles, it started showing it and, you know, axles had to be replaced because of it, axle boots failed. We had stuff like that fail that was fairly straightforward and it's like, okay, I off-road my truck, I expected it. The issues that I've been having with this truck are very different. Within the first 15,000 miles, it's had major failures. Now, there is some wear that's expected with off-roading, but not so soon, right? I've had the exhaust crack on me, which reminds me, that just happened again. Second time the exhaust is cracked in the same exact spot. I've had seals go out. We've gone through four or five steering racks because it's either leaked or it's because we've uh, discovered a problem. So all of these are issues, defects with the truck it should not be having. So if I break something guys and it's due to off-roading, you'll see me call it out and I'm grateful for the uh, warranty if it covers it. But a lot of this stuff has been defects and that's been my concern, right? So yes, I do beat up my truck. Yes, she does get a lot of off-road time, but I have a reference here, right? My 17 was a super reliable truck. My 17 didn't see the death shake till after it had well over 60,000 miles on it and we had put 37s on it. So we had to really load up that front end with 37 in order for it to start having problems. This truck has had the death shake from the first time we took it off road on a fully stock suspension. Now I wanna make sure that you guys understand it. From the beginning, this truck has had the death shake. It's had little issues going on with it that have been quite frustrating. And I'm not the only one. Unfortunately, people aren't as vocal about the issues with the truck, especially with the steering. Finding out that more and more people are having steering problems and they're just not talking about it. It's a major weak point. And those that off-road their truck on the regular are seeing the same exact issues that I am. And some with bulk kits are seeing them right off the bat because of how rough they are on their trucks. So don't look at this as me complaining. This is just me showing you guys what's wrong with this truck, sharing you guys with what I've been going through to try to get it resolved. And hopefully we figure out a fix. So hopefully in this video, we do figure out the fix. So let's get to the testing. So we started off with a fairly mild flat road. We couldn't find pavement to do this on because my goal was to get up to 60 and then do heavy braking and then roll off. I didn't want to do a full stop because that's not what we do off road, right? Off road, we get into the scenarios where we do heavy braking and then we get back on the gas when we're trying to avoid obstacles or we get a wash or something like that. So I wanted to do heavy braking and then let off and let the truck roll. So this road we started on was relatively flat, perfect conditions, truck performed like it should very little nose dive which was kind of surprising to me and the truck performed the way it was supposed to then we went to what i would consider a mild trail dirt road little bit of chop not perfect but the truck could easily hit that at speed so again we got up to 60 did a heavy braking Instantly, the death shake came back. Now, on this road, unfortunately, we couldn't replicate it as often. Sometimes it shook, sometimes it didn't. So then we decided to go to a heavy washboarded road, heavy washboards, nice and tall little washboards that are maybe three, four inches tall, quite a bit of them. And we were able to replicate the best shake consistently after multiple attempts. And what was weird is you see the wheels going back and forth at the front when the best shake came back. So I was kind of surprised that it was doing that in the front. So basically what the steering wheel was showing is what the front was doing. What doesn't make sense is why it's so violent. Now, from talking to a few people, they'd recommended three different features to disable. One is a feature called pull drift that's supposed to help you when, say, the truck's going down the road and the winds come really hard. 
It's supposed to help you so that you don't have to keep the steering wheel to the side. It's supposed to keep it straight. Second was an active system. Active, I'll put the name down here. I can't, I'm bad with names. That's supposed to do something similar. And then finally, a torque steer system. Now, when we looked at the truck, torque steer and the active system were already disabled. They're not enabled on a Raptor. So those weren't it. The only thing that was, was the pull drift. Full drift was enabled. We went ahead and captured all those runs you guys just saw. Captured that early in the morning. Spent some time getting force can set up and disabled them, which was a bitch. I was trying to use force can on a Max. So I meant getting VMware and then getting an OS. Oh, man, it was a pain. It was a pain. Big Sur has been a pain of an upgrade because of all the compatibility issues. Seven thirty oh one. Two, okay, seven thirty six oh one or two, two. Okay, last number one is enabled. Here we go, guys. We just disabled it. Value disabled, disabled. Yes. Oh man. Confirmed. It's a zero. It's a zero. Yep. We're good. So we finally got it disabled and we wanted to go test it out. Now, I, ideally, I wanted to test it out in the morning because I want to be able to film it from the outside. And here's what happened. Just finished doing the force game changes. And normally I should, I should wait. I should wait till the morning. But if I don't at least try a test right now, I won't be able to sleep. So this is me trying to get some sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other room. We have to go to the other section now. We have to test because if we don't test, I'm like, oh man, I even made the wrong turn. I'm so excited. Okay. We have to test this and make sure that it's gone because that felt a whole lot smoother. That felt much, much smoother than before. So we're going to the other spot, the guaranteed spot where we're able to replicate it over and over again at much lower speeds, 40 to 50 miles an hour and see if, see if we got a lick. I don't know. I don't know. I think we do. I think we do, but uh, we're about to find out. We just gotta, I gotta turn my ass around and go to the right direction, because I'm a little too excited that I think we might have fixed it, and ooh, I missed my turn. No. Did it do it? Did you see the steering wheel? Yeah. It didn't move. <laughs> Let's do another pass. Yeah, we figured it out. We definitely figured it out. I think we got it. I think we got it because it was consistent on that road. Any kind of break, we had that shake. So I think we got it. I'm gonna finally be able to get some sleep. I'm gonna be able to get some sleep. This won't keep me up at night anymore. And we're gonna film it in the morning, see how the front end reacts differently in the same exact section, just like in the videos we just showed you guys earlier. Oh man, this is... I don't have to lemon this truck now. That's the big thing. I don't have to lemon this truck because the steering was driving me nuts. The steering issue we've had from the start, from the first time we hit trails with this truck in its full stock configuration, the steering wheel was jerking on us like crazy. Every time we went over a wash at speed, it would jerk. Every time we hit the brakes on dirt, it would jerk like crazy. Every single time I took this thing off road, and I mean every single time, the alignment would pop back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And imagine how annoying that was. Like I, I put the caster camber locks on this thing and I thought they weren't working. Maybe they were done incorrectly because it kept moving. We went on journeys with it, it kept moving and it was just so, so annoying. We went through multiple racks because of this, because I think the racks were damaged in the process. I kind of had the suspicion that it was code related and it was, there was some, there's code in the, uh, in the rack um, that's causing this. So uh, we're gonna go home. I'm gonna do some more research on this feature we disabled to find out exactly what it does. Try to figure out why this is doing this. And I think we may end up sharing this information with Ford. I don't know. I think it might be worth sharing the info with Ford just to get their feedback on it too, is why is it that this issue happens all the time when this module's on? Why is it that this module's causing this? And I think it's worth getting an explanation from them or trying to get ex an explanation from them as to why that, that module is the cause. All right, guys, I need to get some sleep. And now I can sleep. I'll be able to sleep. Right? Hopefully. All right, guys.
See you in the morning. The next day comes around, and as you guys can imagine, I was super excited. We finally, finally got the impression that day shake was gonna be fixed. So we went out the next day in the morning to try to document it, and here's what happened. Right, come in. Nope, that means you can go full speed. Nice and heavy chop, 50 miles an hour, and... That sucks. That totally sucks. It just did it. Ah, I didn't do it last night. Let's go see something. Last night, did you hit 60? We hit 50. All right, so for whatever reason, it happened right off the bat. So we gotta see what's going on. I'm gonna turn on my hotspot so that my laptop can get some internet. Okay, we got that hooked up. Four scan, truck is on. Connect, checking COM3. Turn it so I can do a full scan. PCSM, play. Who's it at? Pull drift compensation. One is enabled, zero it's not. 7.30.01.02, It's disabled and it's still doing it. Why is it still doing it? It didn't do it last night. I'm stumped. Should we try it again? Sure. We disable pull drift again. You know, the steering felt tight this morning. So I'm wondering, let's give it a try. You should feel it right here. Still there. Ah, fucking A. So it's not pull drift. I'm still fucking doing it. The only thing we could try is disabling one of the other modes. So put um, pull drift back on and try disabling one of the other ones. So why don't we try that really quick? Uh, I went ahead and put um, pull drift back on and I checked to see some of the other two modes that everybody recommended. So people recommended disabling active nimble control and torque steer. Both of those were already disabled by default on the truck. So there's no need to enable them. So I went ahead and put nimble control back on and uh, we're gonna try it again. I thought we had this guys. I thought we had it. It was working so good last night and now it's not. So frustrating. Oh, far worse. So, see how he see how much worse it was. So it definitely plays a factor in it. It definitely plays a big factor in it. The problem is what's going on. As you can see, I'm pretty frustrated. Disabling the lane drift definitely reduced it and i'm going to show you here with the lane dripped off it only shook like once or twice with it on it shook quite a bit more and it was way more destabilizing so i think this system or this feature on the rack and maybe some other code on the rack is what's causing it i think this is totally a software related issue i also think that my rack is also damaged already because the system's allowed this to happen so much. My rack is damaged and it's no longer gonna function correctly. So I'm also having a couple of my buddies that are having this issue, have seen it a couple of times, letting them know what to disable and they're gonna test it out too to see if, okay, maybe my rack's already gone even though it's brand new. Maybe this is the fix. On the same token, we're also gonna share this with Ford. We're gonna let them know that, look, disabling the lane drift improves it. it. It doesn't happen that often. You have to be going much faster. Uh, I think. Before, I can make it happen almost regularly from 40 to whatever miles an hour. And once we turned off the lane drift assist, we had to go 50 or more in order for it to happen. And even then, it was nowhere near as bad. Um, it didn't shake as much. There were still one or two shakes, but anything under 50, we didn't feel it at all. Which is, which is a step forward, right? It's, it's progress. Now, we've been waiting on Ford to give us direction on what to do next. I let my service advisor know what was going on before Thanksgiving and Ford was supposed to get back to us. They haven't. So next step is we're gonna force our hand. Chuck's going in on Wednesday, on Tuesday to have the exhaust replaced again. So we're gonna have them look at it cause it's cracked again. 
So we're going to have them replace that again under warranty. Really disappointed that that broke again in the same exact spot in less than 10,000 miles. And then we're also going to document the desk shake again. And we're going to share with them that, hey, maybe it's the lane drift. Maybe there's some bad code. Hopefully we get an engineer this time because I really don't want to get rid of this truck. She does qualify for lemon on now. We've been having this problem for quite a while. She's been down for quite a while. So it qualifies, but I don't want to get rid of her. I don't want to give up on the truck just yet. So we're going to see what the dealer does next. We're going to wait on parts. We're going to wait on four to see what they want to do. And maybe this is something you guys can try. Try disabling this on your trucks and see if you can replicate what we're having, right? Does it eliminate it on your truck? Does it reduce it on your truck? Let me know. I, I'm, I, I really need to know if this is a fix or not from you guys. I'm just hoping, I just want my truck fixed. You guys saw how happy I got when we thought we fixed it. I want my truck fixed. I want to be able to go play. I want to be able to go have fun with this. I want to be able to upgrade this thing. We stopped all the upgrades on this truck after the springs because the desk shake just kept getting worse and worse and worse the more we used it. And I bought this truck to have fun. I bought this truck because it has a warranty and it's going to offset my costs. I don't want a fully built up truck. I don't want a cage truck. I don't want any of that. I love this truck. I love what I can do with the limits of this truck. I love where it can take me. I love reliability of it. I just need to have the steering issue fixed. That's it. I just need it fixed. Yeah, that's it guys. Put any questions or comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys on the next one.